All right, Mr. Wright here with lesson four for the tuba. In lesson three and lesson two, we use just a mouthpiece, but in this lesson, we're gonna use the entire tuba. And you don't wanna put a mouthpiece face down on a music stand to where it will rub or anything, any type of rough surface, because you don't wanna scratch up the surface where your lips are gonna be. Because after a while, it can get really, really rough. And if you do get a school on a mouthpiece that's kind of rough like that, you can take clear fingernail polish and paint that rim, and it'll be nice and smooth again so you can play without getting your lips irritated. You wanna make sure your tuba case is on a flat surface with the label facing up. And I'm gonna undo my latches here. And you'll have to reach all the way around and you wanna to check to make sure there's no other latches that you don't see. You open up your case and you wanna make sure that you grab the tuba in an area where there's, it's nice and st solid. You don't want to just grab one place at the end of a tuning slot. So I'm going to grab here in the central part of the tuba. You want to be very careful not to bump it against anything so that uh, you don't want to put any dents in this. And uh, you don't want to put your hands all over the place. You never want to put your hands on the bell or any place like that. Don't set the tuba, if at all possible, on the bell. Uh, sometimes they can tip over if somebody walks by and bumps them. I like to lay it down back in the case or on a soft place of, of carpet, but you want to be very careful to maintain the finish of the instrument and certainly not to put any dents because that will cause uh, the, the, the airflow won't be as smooth and it'll affect so many different things on the tuba and the response of it. To put the mouthpiece inside the tuba, I'm going to place it in this receiving pipe right here, the lead pipe, set it in there, slight twist, and it's in there. I'm never going to go pow because it can get stuck in there. We don't want to do that. So to hold the tuba, I'm going to basically back up on my chair. And if you're a short person, you may be able to just set the tuba down on the chair like so. But uh, if you've got a longer torso like me, I set it actually on my lap and about this angle. This uh, Different tubas have different uh, designs. Some of you will play them like this, but this particular one uh, this Eastman uh, plays like this. This is a four valve tuba. Your school may have a three quarter size tuba. If you're like in middle school, it may be just a three quarter size with just three valves and that's fine. Those tubas play great. I love, we have two of those at our school and I love playing those. They make a great sound, fun to play, kind of lighter and co more compact. But uh, in lesson three, we played that low B flat. Now it was hard on just a mouthpiece, but with the full tuba and the resonance of this tubing, there's a little more back pressure, so you can hold the notes out longer. You don't get dizzy or anything like that. So I'm gonna play that low B flat, and whereas this is where I relax my lips away from the teeth, and I begin the tone, which is going with my tongue going like saying the word two. And you wanna open up the inside of your mouth, spread your teeth and lips. You should be able to put your thumb between your teeth. Like so, that's how far apart your teeth should be, and your lips should be about that far apart as well. So I'm gonna open up the inside of my mouth like I'm yawning, like, oh. If I close off the inside of my mouth, it's gonna have a nasal kind of sound like, oh. I'm gonna open up the inside of my mouth to get a resonant sound that we want. And then for that upper pitch that we played, and by the way, I didn't have any valves down at all for that low B flat that was in lesson three. For the upper note that we played, the F, it's also open valve. And you want to practice going between those two different pitches. Just going, starting the pitch, each one of those with the tongue, and then the upper F, and practice using your tongue going And because of the resistance, there's, see, as soon as I blow this air, my lips start vibrating, just blowing. You don't have to mash your lips to ever get them to vibrate. They will automatically vibrate as you just pass air through them. Again, remember, your lips and teeth need to be spread apart about the distance of your thumb. So that's a pretty big gap. But as I blow that air and it starts, and my lips start to vibrate and it creates a resonance in the tubing, uh, 
it's going to create a little more back pressure, a little more resonance, and I'm just, I don't have to put as much uh, work into getting my lips to vibrate. There's just that back pressure. So you'll be able to hold notes out for a long time just with the tuba and this resonance that's taking place in this length of tubing. So, and of course, and you, as you're playing, you're going to push down. This is the first valve, the one that's at, under your first index finger, then your second valve, third valve. Of course, your fourth valve is this one. Your tuba may not have that, and that's okay. This fourth valve is for playing really low notes and uh, for adjusting intonation and such. So we're not going to really worry about that fourth valve for right now. But uh, also, and before you play, I should have done this before, but uh, you want to make sure that your tuning slides are pulled out to the proper length, maybe about a half inch in different places. And also, uh, there'll be some water keys, maybe, hopefully, uh, right here. They're not spit valves because what collects on the inside is just moisture from your breath. It's called condensation. So you want to, every once in a while, just uh, put your lips to the outside of the mouthpiece so you don't make an, a sound accidentally and empty out those water keys. Remember, they're water keys, they're not spit valves. You don't wanna gross out the flute players. So, and you wanna move these tuning slides. You wanna find out what slides actually move. Some, they don't move, but some do. And you find out which ones move, and you wanna make sure that you move those once a day. Of course, this first valve slide right here is gonna be, you'll move that quite a bit to adjust the intonation of your first valve, like say when you're playing an E flat. That first valve slide needs to move very quickly and easily. So uh, if you move them every day, they won't get rusted in place. So whenever you're just sitting there and the, the band director is working with somebody else, uh, you want to make sure that these move. Don't pull them all the way out. There's a pain to get them all the way back in. Don't do that. But uh, just make a little bit of movement, and that'll keep them from getting rusted in place. Now, a repair technician would say it's frozen in place. It's just their trade term that they use but it's uh, just when they get ox oxidation. But uh, move those once a day and so that they won't get rusted in place. And you also need to make sure you press down the corresponding valve for that, uh, that, that links up to that tubing right there. So you don't wanna just press it in because then it's, it's, it's bad for the tubing. And uh, let me push these, some of these back in uh, and the main tuning slide. And let me show you really quickly also uh, how to oil a valve. I've already oiled my valves just recently, but I'm going to show you. And whenever you set the tuba down, especially like this, and that's the way you want to do it, you always want to lay it down so that the valves are facing up. I'm going to set it back down and to make sure I take care of it, I'm going to put it right back in the case. And I'm just to show you how to oil the valves, and I, I like to use Alcas uh, valve oil. Uh, some this tuba also came with a great valve this Hetman valve oil but uh, I'm just going to show you I'm going to unscrew this valve cap never unscrew this top because that can take apart the uh, the whole piston and everything so you don't want to do that I just unscrewed this top piece called the valve cap and uh, to re-oil it I'm going to wipe off all the old residue just nice and clean then I'm going to take my valve oil and run a thin bead of oil right across there just like so and let it kind of spin like that and then I'm going to just sit it back in and there's a little valve guide right up here at the top of the valve uh, that will slide into a little slot that's on the far side of that valve so I'm going to set it in there and uh, I'm going to just basically I'm going to be spinning this around to spread that oil out. I used to use my fingers to spread it out, and I thought, hey, why not just use the valve casing itself? The valve casing is this outer tube right here. This is the piston right here. And these holes have to line up with the tubing and the opening right here that leads to these uh, tuning slides. So I'm going to find that valve. This is going to, that valve guide has got a link right in that little slot right there. And I felt it slide in there. So I'm going to hold it down, and I'm going to carefully uh, put the valve cap back on. If it's somewhat crooked, you don't want to press that down. You don't want to force that because that'll strip out the threads and that's very, very difficult to repair and expensive. So don't do that. Make sure, uh, if you, you're not sure, you can basically uh, screw it backwards until you feel it just bump beyond the threads and then you can go back down. And you gotta make sure that valve cap seated nice and properly. But that, that's a little trick to help you find but you can also eyeball it and make sure it's nice and flat and level. 
But uh, I've already done all my valves, so I'm not going to go through that process. And of course, you use uh, tuning slide grease for the, the tuning slides. So you want to be able to move them very easily. You want to wipe them off. You'll take them completely out, wipe them off, put those back in, and, uh, and, I, and you just put a little bit on each of the tuning slides. So, uh, and you'll put it back in carefully. When I finish playing, what I like to do is anywhere where my hands have touched, and of course I've emptied out the water keys, you wanna make sure you do that, I just get some nice soft uh, t-shirts, and anywhere my hands have touched, I like to take the tuba and just wipe it down to get my fingerprints off of the tuba, because your hands have oil and salt in them, uh, on them, and that can corrode the finish on the tuba. So you just, wherever your hands have touched, you wanna wipe that off to protect that, that finish on the tuning slides and everything. So after you've wiped off the tuba, you wanna just set it back in the case very carefully. And of course there'll be a pocket right here for your mouthpiece that you wanna place in there. And then just carefully close it up. All your latches, you'll make sure your case lines up also. Sometimes they can get the, the, the hinges right here, it can get a little bit out of a line. Make sure it's lined up properly so you don't mess up your case. And that case is gonna protect your tuba. But just be very careful. This, these tubas are very, very expensive. You're basically the most important person in the band when you play the tuba because everybody in the band tunes down to the tuba. They listen for the tuba. So you're extremely important to the band. Uh, you will make the band sound uh, more majestic, more powerful as you play. So you're uh, a, a very valuable thing. You're what makes the band sound legit and uh, like the real deal. So thank you for playing the tuba, and I pray that you'll uh, just uh, take that role seriously and always be there for your band director. Don't be absent, don't miss concerts, because you're it. You're very, very important. So uh, take care of your health, get a good sleep, and get good sleep at night, every night, and eat right, And because uh, uh, you're so important to the sound, the whole sound of the band.